welcome back guys so today this will be the last video of this so we left it off here where we built off the auth controller and currently right now we're looking at um, now that the user is authenticated we want to build up forms for our client so that we can be able to uh, what we call um, sign up sign in and after that it will be um hooking up a state um what we call state management for this so that whatever thing that you text here whatever that you send here and then it will be pushed over to the back end and then have your question come up here real time so that's what we're going to be doing today so today is the fun part having everything being real part having the questions part and the answer and comment like system so I think maybe we can pull it off in today's video so now let's start here with components so i'll just be making simple forms nothing fancy nothing hyped so i think what i'll be using is material ui that will be the way much quicker so let's say material ui and the react template and then we'll be getting just a simple uh, authentication form let's take in the sign in and i think all we wanted let's just go to the auth control i think all we wanted was the username and password right there was nothing fancy yeah, that we needed for signing in yeah just the username and password and also the person's image profile image so that should be fine so just copy and paste this guys material ui will do everything for you but then obviously you need material ui installed that which we have in our project so we just copy all that and then um, that should be it so now let's go close this let's go to the client in our components here we want um sign in dot jsx so while we're doing that let's install um What's happening um server error hmm. weird oh it's the mongodb okay no i have to create um what we call uh what's this man uh new new user because every time i create the temp user so it's no problem so say react router that's dumb this is what we want right now so that we can route from page a to page b so let's install that by the way, when we click on this, this had something, I don't know. So then now let's just go to here. So we just wanna paste that entire form and then this should be the sign up. Okay, so we can sign up and then sign in. So, but then I'll handle the sign in because already we have the account. So it'll be basically the same approach, but then, um, okay, let's just do both, man. So we say sign up. Now we change that to sign up. So it's just the matter of changing things. And then for code password, we want to implement that. And then in a sign up, don't have account, sign up, already have an account. So yeah, we say already have an account. um sign in and then i want to change the link which is being used by material you are to use the react router um you link because this one won't have any refresh but then the one from material you are has refresh and i take all hrefs i change that there and then we can change here we can say quarter clone if you guys are liking this videos guys please like share subscribe this really helps me and motivates me to keep on bringing this so remember me we just looked that out we don't want that we just want the username and the password this is a sign up right oh i said sign in okay so another problem is just okay it is a problem because I, i've already done a lot so let's just change this file from sign in to sign up to sign up 
because I've already changed a lot I've invested a lot in this right now so now this should be looking good and then now what we can do now is we go to the app level before we go to the app level we'll remove everything that is not needed we go to the app level we want to wrap this with um, a react router right from react router dom so we want a browser router as router we want the switch and we want the route so what we want to do is we want to take this entire div both of them wrap it with the router and then bring in the switch and then finally bring in the route so this is how um, the react router is configured nice easy nothing complex all right so right now we're just taking all those components we're putting them there and then in the route what we want to do is we want to specify a path and remember that path is for home page forward slash for home page so we need another route that would be having our header because we always want a header and then um we also want the sign up page right and then auto import that we get that there it's a nice trick because as you can see we are using the header all over we can remove that there and uh, remove that there but then on top of this um, i think should be here man if i'm not mistaken we put that header here so now this header will be exposed everywhere where we need it so let's see if i'm not mistaken all right and then yeah it's taking me i didn't specify a path for this route so now i need to specify a path for this route that will be forward slash user dash sign up all right so now as you can see the header is there and then if i go to user dash sign up i can see the header there and i can see that there and we only wrote it once instead of repeating ourselves some tricks and trades for uh, what we call for um, not repeating yourself uh, complying to the dry don't repeat yourself so now we have this set up right so now we want to go to the sign up page we need state management right and we need axios for sending data to our database or our server so let's say npm axios so now what we do while axios is installing let's have use state and then now that we have our use state we need to manage the username the email the email yep the email and the password and i think i said username within the controller let's just go quick check if i said username it's not a problem as well I just need to be sure what I said. Um, auth controller. I said username and password. So that's what we're looking at here. Username and password. So it means that I can change this email. Um, I can say user name and then ID username and then autocomplete. Uh, even though this might not work because I think material UI doesn't have things like that for username and all that so for the now there's no problem we're not looking for autocomplete so let's have a state for username username and set username to use state and then that should be an empty string and then we want the password set user set password is equal to use state have that and then remember the file image right remember the image set image is equal to use state this should be now on its initial state right so now what we want to do is we want to say for this username 
when I say unchange, when I say E, go to set username to E dot target dot value. And then for the password, when I say unchange, and then when I say um, E, and then set um, password. Okay, I was wondering why my intelligence was not working. Either target dot value, not validate, man, dot value. And then I need an input here of type file, which will have a label of um, profile picture. All right. And then on change, we want to set E, and then we say set image to E dot target dot files. Oh, the first one, right? So we're not allowing anyone. If, for example, for no reason, one would choose two pictures, but then just to make sure that we don't get two pictures sent there. Right, so now let's have an on click for this one. And then on click will be sign user up. And then let's create that function just right here. So say const that. And then it should take an E as an argument. And then we say e dot prevent default. So this we doing this because um, it might it, it not it might it will refresh. So we're trying to avoid that. So what I want to do right now is I want to say const um, form data is equal to new um, form data. So I want to say form underscore data dot dot append. I want to append the username with the username that I have there. I want to say form underscore data dot append dot append. I want to append the password with the password that I have there. Now I want to say form underscore data dot append. Come on, man. I want to append the image with the image that I have there and then what I want to do is I just wanna um, let's see um, so right now we need to get the route at which um, this is happening right so now we need to validate just one thing yeah All right in our um, this okay so we have our origin set up just had to make sure that it's set up properly and then now what we want to do is we want to get the route at which we sign up so the route at which we sign up let's go to our auth route so this is the route that we need All right so now because we are using um, Axios and it has credentials we are bound to always when we send a request we have to send also credentials um, Mm, property that is there right so now I want to make this function asynchronous and then I could um, say const I have my const URL which is HTTP localhost 5000 and then we have that right and then I want to try catch so why am I using a try catch because I'm using asynchronous approach if I wasn't using an asynchronous approach then I'd have the promise dot then and the and the dot catch but then because I'm using asynchronous approach I'm bound to um, have this set up like that right so now what we do now is we say const um, data we say const response is what await axios dot post I want to post on that URL and then I want to post 
with that form data and then now the most important part with credentials I set that to true right and then now after doing that um, I need to destructure what we call my my response to get the data which is the message that I can alert the message that I get from the server and then I want to say alert so now I want to destructure because in signing up I want to destructure also the status right so now what I mean by this is just we want to add some good user experience I want to say use history and then what we do is on the use history I want to redirect this person to the login page so where they are authenticated right when they successfully signed up so that's what we're gonna use this hook called use history so now what I do is if status because when the user successfully created I have a status of 201 so if status is 201 I want to alert the response data dot message because it's the message that we set there and then after that I want to say history dot push forward slash user dash sign in that's what we're gonna make so but now let's say we do get an error so when we do get an error what do I wanna do I just wanna alert um okay so when I get an error I wanna destructure do I wanna destructure nope because when I get an error I just get an error so when I say alert error dot uh, response dot data dot message all right so we are always getting a message from our back end server hopefully I'm not creating errors here I can see my because I could see my pretty is not working and I could definitely tell that there's some errors which I have so I see that that was an error right so what other error am I having here um, Closing tag container sign up the JSX. What closing tag now? Okay, so what caused that error because I didn't touch who touched this thing? Okay, so because I don't want to be repeating myself, let me just copy this because I don't want to be repeating this logic. I don't know what touched that container. Hectic. So no worries because I have that in, on my clipboard. Okay. So now it's not. Oh, it's not yet back. So I don't know what's happening uh, because I have that there. Okay, so the simplest thing because I don't want to be wasting time. I don't know what touched. What the hell touched that container? Because I never did my myself. I never did. I promise you I never touched that container but then it's fine at least I have um okay, so okay I don't know I wouldn't have I won't have it anymore mm, so what do I do now so that I, I do not repeat myself over so this logic I don't want to find myself repeating this logic <laughs> so let's just paste that there and then this is not a problem this was just a quick uh, removing the redundant information that we don't need. Actually, I don't even need to remove that, but then let's see. Because no one touched that container, I promise y'all. Uh, okay, so let's just grab everything from there. Paste that there, right? So now that container shouldn't cry. Now, what I want to remove is this greed forgot password. I don't need this. All right. And then already have an account. Sorry for this, guys. And then we say you wanna sign in. We change this to sign up. Let me not save as yet. 
we change also this to sign up we change this to sign up and then what I want to do is I want to have an on click on this button so that I can bring back that logic at the top on click which will be sign up user and then I bring it um, just here so I say const sign up user and then I copy that entire logic see how easy this shoe was being was no need for me to repeat myself so before just don't mind everything being like this I need to bring my use state because this is gonna give me some errors so let's just first bring in the use state also let's bring in the use state in the mix let's say const username set username is equal to use state we have that const password set password is equal to use state we have that const image set image is equal to use state we have that now let's change this um, label to user name username 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 and have an on change handler that will be e set username to e dot target so nothing has changed guys just that I couldn't decipher that problem so when I was lazy to um, look into deep you know I could just copy another code snippet so now input field that's what we need so I don't need this form control for remember me I don't need that for this input field we'll type a file having a label saying um, a profile image and then we have an on change handler which would be e set image to e dot e dot target dot files I want the first file so at this point I can save everything and my intelligence should handle all the code format all right so let's refresh this let's see if this will still cry okay so exit is not defined i have to import exio so that is a minor bug there let's just import here even uh, from exios right however what i want to do is um this link i don't want to use that link like i told you guys i don't want the refreshes when i link so with the router DOM, so note that I will control shift L to pick out all the HRFs and then change it to two. And then also changing this unnecessary part in Quora clone. All right. And then history, remember that hook that we used. So when I say use history, and then we want to instantiate that use history. So I'm going to say const history is equal to use history right so now we should be bug free right so now we have everything that we need now we just have to send back a request back to this um server right so before i send back obviously my mongodb won't allow me because my credentials have expired i say with mongodb you want to set back other credentials uh, so let's just do that that should be just a minor quick fix
so if you guys are liking this video please like share and subscribe and while i'm doing this mongodb like guys like like this video and i promise to give you guys more content quality content and then just comment down below what you guys would want to see and i will look into it just comment down below what you want to see right so let's bid this um youtube algorithm let's try and build this youtube algorithm and yeah so let's get this database access that's what we need exactly so we do not have any user here so we want to make sure that we add the same username just say test and then we just need to generate a new password i copy that password and then definitely do that so now that we should be having a new user but then now i just have to take this password right and then that password i change it with that so now let's see if my server will allow my if mongodb will allow my server to connect and shoot i don't see why so let's just get that running and let's see mm -mm -mm. let's get that connection let's get that connection okay so we have that connection our server started let's see how mongodb did it connect perfect that's what we wanted so now we close that and we are most interested in sending a request actually and see if we get an error or not so let's sign up we want to sign up with a username let's say um junior i think there's a duplicate user so i should get an error and then let's say one two let's say one two three four five six let's get an error that's what we're looking for at, at the end of the day so right here i will just um put in any image so i don't have any i don't have images guys um so i'll just put it in unfortunately on this build i was just putting images of myself <laughs> i don't have any other images i'm sorry guys so let's just try that so i'm getting undefined hmm that's interesting that's interesting that's interesting so now what we want to do is let's just log out the responses in both um ends so that we can see what actually is this undefined right so i just also want to ah so yeah the error it's fine so let's just handle that one here okay so i'm getting a 404 not found and what's happening here with the not found user sign up now let's go to our controller let's see where we are giving an error of 404 all right so 404 is being given if user is existing that's where if we return a 404 all right um because that's what i was expecting but then i'm not getting an alert okay makes sense come on man why did i close that um i want to open that so now oh i said error that, that msh should be that msg that's why so now we should get that alert right now so junior is remember last time we signed up as junior username with this uh user with this username already exist all right so let's try ben all right so let's sign up let's see what happens we should get a response oh you're getting an error okay new account has been created that is this one right so now we've created an account we have two accounts so there's no need to so and then it redirects me here so there's no need to what we call make tons of accounts two accounts should surface uh what we need to do 
so now what we want to do is we want to log in right um so for logging in i think i could just copy this entire code snippet so now we create a component called sign in .jsx. paste that there so now we just want to change as always and then we say don't have an account don't have an account sign up and then we want to change this to sign up no men um, sign in so don't have an account you want to sign up and then what we expect here is we do not want an image when someone is signing in we just want the username and the password we change this to sign in we change this function to sign in and then the link in the axio should work and the state management should work right now I just have to remove the image and the remove that and the use history should also work but then now when the status is 200 i just want to take them 200 because when someone signs up it's 200 i want to take them to the home page and then um when you sign up we do not send any message i just want to redirect you to the home page and then that should be the logic but then now we need to change this url to sign in let's just confirm that going to the author route we confirm that we have that user dash sign in and then this should be everything that we need we can remove this console log and then right now we are expecting to get some cookies in our um client right so now this should work if it doesn't work debugging guys you know you know standard procedures so now let's take this to the app and then we just duplicate that and then we change this to sign in and then we say sign in control that for or import and then now what i need to do from here is in my sign in page all right when you click that i want to say user dash sign up and then in my sign up page i want to change route there to user not to hash to user dash sign in so now that we have that said and done what we then do is let's see this working for us right mm, let's come in here so here's the sign in page that we have here right so now we want to sign in and then see if this works so there's nothing that we did much it was just copy pasting and then modifying whatever that we needed to modify so now let's sign in let's say um ben that's what i remember even the password one two one two three four five six let's see so we should be redirected to the home page if we did sign in successfully and let's see if we're not getting any errors from our server so we got redirected to um the home page it means that we got a status of 200 let's check our cookies so from off the bat when i see this i know for a fact that my cookies are set but then let's just see and then there we go guys we have our cookies which is http only so now what we want to do from here is we want to um, what we call we want to send back a request to our user so that um what we call so that we can know if this user is signed in and then also remember we want to change this to the profile image of this person so let's do that so where do we do this i normally do it in the, in the what we call in the home page because that is where everything um, will be easy to push down so unfortunately i wouldn't be ad adding too much layers of this project like context and any anything i want to make keep it as beginner friendly as possible so we're going to be prop drilling a lot and then so here we just want to say auth underscore status that's what we want to get and then we say set auth status 
and then initially to use state I also need a use state so I want to keep this um, tutorial as simple as possible but then at this point I will know that I would have to use um, a state management or something right instead of prop drilling so I'll set that to null right so now I have this set right so now what I want to do is on this use effect whenever anything happens to the app so I'm putting this in the app because even if it happens in the header or it happens in wherever the app gets triggered this use effect of the app will get triggered so now what I want to do is I want axios also I want to say input axios from axios so now what I want to do is I want to say um, so now remember we created a route did we let's see so we have only two routes here the sign up and the sign in it means that we don't have that logic as yet for us to check if our user is authenticated right so which is this log let's see here so log in that's all we have we have the log in and the log and the sign up so now let's check if is logged in so what we want to do we want to say is logged in so let's say request response right so now so that i can show you guys what happens let's just console.log request so that you guys can see um, how this actually works All right so let's build this up together nicely without me um building excuse me without me building off knowledge so i'm show you guys the api slash is user logged in All right so we wanna have a request response and then what we wanna do is wanna say auth controller dot is logged in we pass down that request and that response right so now let's go back to the app and just send back a request to this route so axios.get and then let's just get const const url is got http http at that localhost that 5000 right and then the route is is user logged in and then we paste that there and then i want to get that url and then remember always with credentials you won't succeed to making a request without with credentials and then i want to have that response and then let's log out the response for now for now we will get errors because we didn't return anything to this um, client so definitely we're gonna get errors but then this is the purpose for me just to show you guys what the response we get from this user so now let's that uh, let's see if we get a console log so let's just refresh our component here so refresh that so that we can get a request back so here we go so as you can see we have the main important part is this session id and the session itself this is what we want but then what i want to add so that we can make our life easier when we taking in uh, what we call uh, what we call then when we're taking in questions i also want to add the user's profile image url here so that's what i want to add so that should be a quick addition so what do i mean by this is remember where's the login this is the sign up you have the login so in the login remember we have the username and the id right so i want to say image let's say profile image right so this is ex existing user dot so i just need to get that from mongodb because i don't know this by head um i could have found it in my models man why go far we have user users which is profile image indeed itself so now we say is existing user dot why am i saying property <laughs> um 
copy that paste that there right so now what i want to do is i just want to kill that session that we have there so that we can have a new session that will have the profile image url so that whenever we send back a request we have that profile image url because even when we make um what we call even when we make um what's this man when we make a request to send um what's this um when we make a request to to what's this to send the question the cookies will be sent so when the cookies are sent um we have access to the um session thing that is the right so but then one thing that i realize yeah is now we have that now so we should be good to go so now what i want to do now what i want to do is here in this thing let's log in let's log in one more time so let's just go to user dash sign in so now when i sign in i want to say ben and one two three four five six so i should send that request let's just say so that i don't waste my time right so now i got redirected here and this is the okay so let's just close that I refresh that so that i can see clearly because now i got lost from all those console logs so now what i want to do is i just want to refresh my home page again after refreshing my home page and then i see the log if my existing user so there we go now we have that user image see that profile image from cloudinary that's what i wanted so that on every request it will be easy for me just to take in that path that thing so that i can have the user's image on the post that they made right so now what we want to do is we want to check if this user is logged in so now how we do that this logic is very simple guys we just say const um we say const um user session is equal to request dot session and then else i give it false if it's not there so now i say try catch so yeah i return on the catch if there's anything wrong with my server written a response of 500 message um server error just gonna copy that just gonna literally copy that paste that there and then else if there's no error within my server i want to now check if user session does exist and then what i want to do is i want to um, return a response that status of 200 dot json with a message not a message but then an auth status underscore status of true that's what i want to send back to the um what we call um server not the server but then the client and then yeah i want to send the response that status of 200 also but then a json with an auth status of false so yeah i get confused sometimes i'm not sure if 200 is the right status code but then i don't see why is it a bad request because we just check in makes sense so now um let's just save that and then now we should be getting our auth statuses back from this um route right so now if i go to my app and then those console logs let's just kill all of those console logs oh we did kill them yeah we did kill them because they were f irritating now <laughs> so now let's go back here i'm most interested in the console logs and then let's see if i refresh this um if i get my auth status and then we get a 200 and then we get an auth status of 200 because yes this person is logged in right so now i want to extract that auth status and then within the question box i need um 
what we call a button um, for submission right so let's just add question box so this is the input right so what I'm thinking is we'll say um, question box underscore underscore input field so the main aim for me to do this is because I want to use flexbox for that button and everything but then right now I just want to do it like that and then just show you guys that it wouldn't it shouldn't even affect anything here right so it shouldn't affect anything so always whatever that happens to the app a request is sent to check if this user is authenticated or what now what I want to do is I want to have a button here so I'll say button and then I'll say ask question right so now we have that button there so obviously i want to flex box it um push it there the far end right and then what i then do is i need some css so now let's go to style sheet question box let's close this other tab close that and then the app i don't need for now i don't know if we'll end up needing it again so now I need this button, right? So I say class name, which is question box underscore btn, All right? So don't mind my CSS, guys. That's just the norm of being super descriptive. And then what I want to do is I want to say, um, okay, so this one should be the last one that i'm thinking of styling right because right now i just first have to establish the flex box to display flex so let's say justify content space between right so i've established that distance that i need right but then as you can see it looks like this thing doesn't have that much space as it used to be that input field right so how I can establish that is um, in this input field there is a class of input field right so this input field we want to say flex of one right let's see if that changed as you can see now I have way much more space than this thing however here I want to say align items center so that I can align this to and that is okay let's see so now in the input field I have a margin bottom let's kill this margin bottom so now hence we have now that center alignment properly right as you can see that center alignment properly we have that looking good so but then now because i don't like it being this small what i do is i bring back that in margin knowing that i also have to bring the margin also to this one so that they get aligned in the same way i believe they are aligned unless maybe i'm not seeing properly I believe they are aligned as you can see this goes straight to that box right they're not that box on that button so they are aligned properly all right so now secondly what I want to do is when this user is logged in I remember that we only sent auth status but then I didn't send the profile image so now it's what I'm thinking about right now that I forgot that we need to also set this profile image of this user so now let's just close all this so now in this thing here uh, is when the user is logged in and the status is true I have the user session right so remember this user it will be user session dot user dot profile image that's what we're looking at right so what I mean by this is user session dot oh man I have to say profile image is user session dot user small letters dot user dot profile image right 
so now that should be what we need to send back the profile image and then we set that profile image within the src of the header right so what i mean by this is now when i get that i also need a profile image there so now let's see that what i mean so now let's refresh this page and as you can see i get the profile image now right so now i have to send um when this is true what i have to do now is i have to say um i want to say set auth status and then auth status is response dot data as a response dot data what's happening with my typing now response the data dot auth status and then set um image which is a response dot data dot profile image right so now once i've done that i want to um i want to send the what we call the props to the header because that's where the head the content is needed at the head the profile image is needed at the header so i want to send that profile image let's say um profile and then in this profile i send the profile image right and then in the question box what i want to send is odd status that if this person is authenticated that box should be disabled so i say auth status so some logic that you can look at and now what i want to do is i want to go to the header right so that we can first display that there so this header is now taking props of um let's just go look at that name again of profile right so i just put it like that and then in the src where's that image um here yeah, in the avatar right in the avatar i wanna put in the profile profile like that should be like that i think it should be like this right so let's see if that worked all right so let's refresh this hmm. okay so why isn't this working right um meanwhile i'm getting the profile okay so what then i want to do is So let's see something let's conditionally render something yeah so let's say when profile and end i want to display that shocking that is not giving me an error hmm so profile is not there is not giving me anything <laughs> this is interesting so now what we then do okay so questions i can okay you can look this out dependence that we never used so this is interesting so what i want to do is because it doesn't make sense so let's just log out let's just log out profile let's see this is interesting oh it's undefined interesting so now what i want to do is i want to go to my app there's this, some bit of error problem that's happening here so let's log out my response right i think that will be key to finding the root cause of all this 
okay so i'm getting hit by cores my server why is my server restarting <laughs> what's happening yeah I, I think maybe that was the reason but i'm not getting any response back from the server because my server is restarting yeah <laughs> okay so let's just um test this again what's happening with my server okay so now we get that perfect right so now what is happening is i get that profile image i get the auth status right hmm. um so now what i want to do is this thing is getting now okay so i want this use effect to okay once i think maybe that could be also be the main why is my server always restarting itself i don't get it the sense right but then that is not solving my problem right so let's see what's happening here um am i getting the right names for these things i think i show m oh i had a small i hence that was not working i had a small i and then let's just refresh that just a minor problem let's see if this works now so but then now I don't want to handle things the way I was here, conditionally doing things and all that in the head. Um, it's unnecessary complexity. Because there we go. It was just unnecessary complexity there of conditionally rendering things. Because it was just a minor bug by me of having a small eye instead of a big eye right so now we have that um image being sent through here so now we want to establish the image also being here so that is the question box so now same procedures right because here in the question box we send the odd status and we want to also send the profile so the question box receives two things right so now what I then do is I go to question box and then question box will receive profile and auth underscore status. So now this button has to be disabled if this person um okay so what I wanna do is I wanna check auth status equals to true and then I wanna set it to false. Because it means this person is authenticated. Else, I want to set it to true because it means this person is not authenticated. I hope you guys understand the logic. Because now, if this thing comes back as true, that means this thing must be false. Not it shouldn't be disabled. But then, if this is not true, then it should be true because it means that this person is authenticated. I hope that logic makes sense. And then here in the avatar, I wanna use profile right and then that should work as well there we go we have that image being loaded up there so now we have everything looking just fine and then this is not disabled right so now what we want to do is we want to handle this thing of sending back um a question right because now authentication is handled just nice and everything is working just fine so now what we then do is we want to send a question back to the um, server and then have it come up in real time back to us right so now that has to mean that we have to play around with the models for a bit so in the models let's say file folder let's say questions right and then here i want to say questions.js so import mongoose from mongoose so const question schema is equals to mongoose dot schema and in the schema we have the owner of the question we'll say type string 
required true and then we want to have the question itself which is the type of string required true and then what we want to do now is we want to have um upvote which is a type of string and this is not required but then default there will be zero and then downvote which will be a type of string and then default for this one is also zero and then we have comments and comment is a type of array and that should be basically it right for our questions and then noting that i omitted the media file upload so let's get this um tutorial to 50 likes and i'll definitely get that um uh, media files handling also media files and everything within our questions but then today i'll just be handling plain text and making it real time for you guys and then that will be a challenge for you guys to add um media files and everything so question model is equal to um mongoose mongoose dot model and then this should be questions model and then I use the question schema. Right. Now I'm gonna export default, which is question model. Right. Now this should be my questions model. So now what I then wanna do is I wanna have a controller for that. Right. So we say um, questions, right? So I wanna say a file which will be my questions controller dot js so now i want to import formidable for body passing that's important from formidable i also need um that or i believe i also need my um questions model I think I don't need dot env on this one. Model questions that right. I think formidable and this should be great for me. So now let's create this class and say questions controller. Right. So now here is ask question one, right? Which will take in a request and a response and then we want to instantiate formidable go to new formidable dot incoming form so we want to try catch i remember always just for the status status of 500 dot json the message of server currently down please try again later right so now what we want to do is want to form dot pass this request and then we might get an error of fields or files right so now if we get an error we want to handle that as well guys we want to return a response the status of 500.json and send the message saying net work error could not ask your question right and then what then we then do from here is we expect here on formidable um, on the fields we expect the question itself and that's all basically because the rest will be getting from um, the cookies right because we want to get the owner the owner will be the ID we'll store the ID not the username um, or should we uh, let me see um, 
or this this console logs will give us what this user has so we also have the username so we can even extract the username so that's not a problem so on the owner we have the username and then also the image of this person because we need to i forgot that um owner's image so that we need to display that image on the side just like the way they're doing there so we say owner underscore image and then there's a type of string required true right and then we do that so now in the questions we just expect the question basically from fields and then what we want to do from there is we want to just validate for in case if there's no question this person wasn't serious why they sent uh, status of 400 that Jason have that message that a question has to be asked All right so now if there is a question right what I need to do first I need to extract the user session right is equal to request dot um, session so one thing that you have to understand is um, if the user session isn't there so when I have the request dot session dot the user right so if this thing is not there so let's just have this as false right so am i right about this um but tick, 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 tick. so we can validate if i'm right about this is we have request that session and then this request that session we then access user session dot user so what is the difference with saying is session dot user right so if session dot user if request session dot user is not there we give that a false all right so now we say if not um user session or let's say if user session because it means that it's there right but then obviously um the browser wouldn't have allowed the person to send back because but then just for validating right it's a good good practice so if the user session is there what i want to do is i want to get const um owner underscore image which is equal to user session come on user session dot profile image right so that's what i need and the rest is not required right and i need to extract also the name of the owner and the question i have so i want to say const owner which is equal to user session dot username i think let's go validate that and then that's it username and then that should be it so now what i want to do is i want to say const um new question is equals to um new question model and then i have the owner shorthand ces6 i want to have the owner image which is the owner image so here i'm not taking any risks with having that like that so what i want to do is i want to say like that and then i need the question and put that as a question right so just for to make it beginner friendly we're going to be using the same principles of objects and that's what i'm thinking aim is to keep this as beginner friendly as possible all right so these are the required things the rest will be defaulted to zero and an empty array i have to do that we say default for this should be an empty array right the rest of this is the required all right so now i want to save this thing i want to say const saved question is equal to await remember now i'm interacting with mongodb await that means that i want to have this asynchronous so you just don't await you know when to await know when not to 
So now you want to save that new question. Dot save and whoa, my intelligence tells me everything. So right now, what's happening here is my intelligence is telling me there's something wrong. Yeah. Mm, wasn't this exported? Um, new question dot save and then why is that not working? Okay, let's see. Like I really follow a lot. My intelligence really tells me everything, guys. So don't mind me. <laughs> I'm a huge believer that intelligence is always right. Unless maybe now that should be it. You can see now it gives me that intelligence, right? So now that I've saved this user, now I can return a response that status of 200, 201 saying that created that new message, that message saying that question. I remember making this as an object. We have an MSG saying that question asked right so now that we've asked that question so now should we test it hmm so yeah let's test this um thing so let's have another route for questions route and then here we say questions dot js so now let's just kill that, let's kill that, let's kill that. I say import express from express and then import um, questions controller from um, go back up, go back up, controller, questions, questions controller. So const router is equals to express dot router. And then I want to say const questions controller is equal to new questions controller. And then see my intelligence tells me a lot that this happened. Like I really pay attention to my intelligence guys. Um I didn't expose this thing, right? So my, it's, I don't know if it's a good thing, but then uh, my intelligence is my best friend. It tells me everything that I need to know. All right. So now I have that working, right? So I could, because I could see that. So what gave everything away is when I created that, I didn't get this um, pop up here. So I then knew something is wrong. If you guys are wondering how did I pick that up. So now I say API slash ask dash question and then we say request response and in here we say question say question dot ask question we have that request a response have the day I want to export default router All right now that is working on it expose this route to the server and i'm thinking so that we don't make this video long the final video will be the next video that will be upcoming whereby we'll be handling the upvote basically everything that is real time everything that's real time and also displaying the questions within our um page so let's say uh, import so that this thing is not long you guys can get bored listening to me <laughs> i will say route we say question route say that so once this work excuse me once this work we should be good to go for the next video that will be posted tomorrow on the first of december right so now that question route is exposed so but then now so that we don't have a lot of work to do in the next meetup let's just hook this client up to sending that request itself that means that we need a use state and we need to have axios right we need to have axios 
So now we want to say const um, state, we want to say question set question is equal to use state and set that to that, right? So now that is it. So now what we want to do is we want to in input field, we want to have an on change, and that will be. Um, e set question to e dot target dot value. I want to have the value of this thing to be the question, right? And then what I want to do is I want to have an on click for this button. When this button is so you ask question, right? So what I want to do is I want to say const, come on, const. First thing that I want to do is I just, just alert that question. Let's see if all is working fine. This is my question, all right? And then I want to alert that this is my question. So my state is working just fine. So now that means that I want to send back this as a response. Not a response, I'm not saying response. I send this to the database, which will be my form underscore data is equals to new form data. I say form underscore data dot append. And we want to append the question with a question and then I want to say const should I use async in this there we go so I say async and then I want to say try before try catch on the URL which is HTTP like that HTTP that 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 local host 5000 slash where's that URL question route this is the URL that I'm looking for All right paste that there and then I want to try catch All right and what's happening here mm. oh yeah so I want to try catch and then in here I want to say const response is equal to await axios dot post to that URL with the form underscore data and uh, um, credentials always important because you'll get hit by cause and I'm sure that's not what you want. And uh, in here, what you wanna do is wanna alert error.response.data.message. And in here, what you wanna do is you wanna alert an error, not error man, you wanna uh, alert response.data.message what you want to alert so let's see if this works and then tomorrow we're going to be dealing with upvoting displaying this content here let's say uh, what because it's core clone right so let's say what is the best way of improving in main stack right so all fingers crossed that this works. Question asked. So let's see in our database. Let's refresh. Let's see if we have all the contents that we need that we're gonna be using tomorrow. So if you guys are liking this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and there'll be more um, coming. Um, Real-time applications, you name it. You guys just comment down below on what you'd like to see and I'll definitely deliver. As you can see, we have the upvote.
being zero and all that and one thing that i realized that i made a mistake of let's delete this i made the upvotes and downvotes as an array as a string and i'll have a problem the moment i increment those numbers because you know strings how they are right so now what i want to do is just that minor thing we go to model we want the upvotes to be a number and then you want the downvote to also be a number right and then the comments can be whatever an array right so that's that minor change there nothing hectic all right so let's wait for that to restart and then we ask the same question which we're gonna be answering together tomorrow so let's wait for mongodb to connect and there we go come on man yeah i hate this mongodb but when it takes so long so now we have that we have zero questions let's ask again we ask question asked so let's verify that I have integers instead of strings as my downvotes and upvotes. And then tomorrow, we're going to get that done. Like I said, guys, please like, share, subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And there we go. We have those things as we need. What is the best way to learn main stack? And then we have that profile image. So I hope you guys like this video and you're learning a lot as I am learning with you guys. And goodbye.